Hey, hi friends, this is Bakapa. In this tutorial, I will discuss how to implement page object model design pattern with specflow. Firstly, I will discuss why we have to use page object model design pattern. Then I will discuss what is page object model. Then we will see what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the page object model. Then finally, I will discuss what are the minutes of this particular tutorial. So let's discuss why we have to use the page object model concept. If you look at the diagram, so here I'm identifying the element and I'm performing the action. And if you look at the locator value, so I have highlighted it in the yellow color. But in each of the line, I'm performing the different action on the element. Firstly, I'm clearing it. Second method is a click method. And third method is send keys. But in these cases, Locator value is same and we are hard coding that particular value. Let's assume we have 100 test scripts or 100 step definition classes. So wherever we need to perform an action on the element, so we might have done the in a similar fashion, right? So tomorrow developer will come to you and he will ask to run the test suit, right? In that case, you will execute the test suit and you will get to know that there are a lot of autom automation script got failed because of the no such element exception. Because there might be a reason a developer might have changed the web page attributes, attributes and the values because of the XYZ reason. In that cases, so you might have implemented the 100 test scripts or step definition files by hard coding the locator value, right? In those cases, what you will have to do, you need to check each and every test script where you have hard-coded the locator value, you need to modify it, right? So this will be the very tedious job for you and maintenance will be very high. So you'll be spending a lot of time in maintaining, maintaining the test script itself, right? So how you can avoid this kind of scenario is by using the page object model concept. So let's discuss what is page object model concept. So page object model is a design pattern to create the object repository for the web page elements. And for every web page, there will be a corresponding page class. Then each page class contains web page elements and also it contains the abstraction methods which will perform the action on the that particular page itself. Right. Let's take take an example of YouTube.com. So here I have listed out two diagrams. First one is search page. When you open the YouTube.com, and here you'll find the one search text box. First, you need to identify this particular search text box. You need to keep it in the search page class. And if you want to perform the search functionality, if you want to perform the search functionality. What you need to do, you need to implement the one abstraction method in the search page itself, search page class itself. So whenever there is a later point of time, later point of time, if any functionality got changed, so directly you can come to this particular search page and search page and you can update it there. It can be any locator or it can be with respect to the functionality that is abstraction method. So similarly, so after performing the search functionality in the YouTube search page or the home page of the YouTube, so it comes to the next page called result page. And if you look at this one, so here I have searched with the tester stock, then it's displayed the relevant results. So this is our the result page. For example, here I want to click on this channel name. So I will identify this element and I'll keep it in the result page class. And I, if I want to click on this, channel name. So what I will do, I will implement the one abstraction method, which will click on this channel name. So that's how it is. So if you're having a number of pages, with respect to that, there will be corresponding page class in the automation framework. So this is a simple example. I hope you understand this concept. So let's move on to the next slide. So let's discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the page object model concept. 
So code will be more cleaner and easy to understand if you follow the POM concept. Then object repository is independent of the test scripts because we will be having the page classes because in the page classes it contains the web page elements and object and with respect to that abstraction methods which will perform action on the same web pages. Then third advantage is test script will be optimized because we will be having the page abstraction methods implemented in the page classes so that we can create the with less keystrokes we can create our test script. So let's discuss what are the disadvantages of you disadvantages of using the page object model. First one is time and effort. So we'll be spending a lots of time in creating the page object model page classes because you will have to identify the web page element and you need to implement the abstraction method which will perform the action on that particular page. So that will be quite time taking time consuming and next disadvantage is it is specific to the project. Suppose if I have implemented the page object model concept in the one project, I can't use the same code in the another project. So that's the second disadvantage. So that's it. That's all about the advantages and disadvantages. So let's discuss what are the minutes of this tutorial. That means what we are going to do it in a couple of minutes. First step. Step one, we are going to discuss the test scenario which we are going to automate it by using the page object model. And second, we will create the feature file. Then we will create the step definition class. Next, we will implement the scenario steps in the step definition class. Then finally, we will create the page objects, page classes. At the end, we will execute the test script. That means we will execute the feature file and we will verify the extent report. You can find all the code, whatever I have, I have discussed so far with respect to the spec flow tutorial series. You can go to this GitHub page. Once you go to this GitHub page in the web browser, over here in the repositories, you will find the spec flow BDD automation framework. You can go to this repository and you can clone it by using this link. If you come down here and you will find the contents what I have covered for the Specflow Selenium Shishar BDD Automation Framework. So this is the last tutorial I am covering it for the Specflow BDD Automation Framework. So let's discuss the our minutes of the minutes of this tutorial. So firstly we will discuss the scenario. So I will open this browser Chrome browser then I will enter this URL youtube.com then I will perform the search with the tester stop. So before that so after opening the browser it is displayed the search page. So basically this is called a search page or the home page and then we will after entering the search keywords we will press the enter from the keyboard. Then we have the another page displayed called result page. So while creating the page object page classes, we will be creating the three pages. First one is the result, sorry, first page is home page or the search page. Second one is a result page. After coming to the result page, we will click on the tester stock link. Then we will verify this particular text title of this particular window right so this is this is a scenario what we are going to automate it in couple of minutes so let's go back to the ide now we will create the feature file and we will create the scenario for the same test scenario so i will go to the features folder and here i will add the feature file first here i'll select the spec flow then I will specify the feature file name as page object model. Then I will add it. I will open the page. I will just rename this uh, 
future name as a page object model dot future file. So, so that's it. Then here I'll specify the future name as page object model. Let me close this test explorer now. I don't need it. So I'm specifying the page object model as a future name. And similarly, I'll specify the scenario name as the same name. That is a page object model as a scenario name. And I will specify the tag name as tester stock. So that's it. Here I'll write the one simple line. I mean the description for the feature. Search testers talk in YouTube. So that's it. So let's implement now let's write the steps by using the gherkin keywords so in the given what i will do so this framework already takes care of how to open the browser and how to close the browser by using the hooks already we have discussed in the previous tutorials so after opening the browser we are entering the url so that is the reason i will write the first step as enter youtube URL. So this is the first step. So enter the enter the YouTube URL. And second step, what I will write is search for the tester stock in YouTube. And then I will write the third step by using the and curtain keyword. So we have opened the browser from the hooks, then we have entered the URL, then we are searching for the tester stock in YouTube. And after that, we have to click on the channel name, right? So that's the reason here I'm writing navigate to channel. Then, so after navigating to the channel page, so here, we have to verify the title of the that particular web page right then i'll say verify title of the page that's it guys so it is very simple from the hooks automatically browser will open then in the first step we are entering the url then we are searching for tester stock in youtube then we are navigating to the channel then finally we are verifying the title of the page so that's it we are done with the step two. The first step we have discussed the test scenario. Then sec in the second step, we have created the page object model feature file. In the third step, we have to create the step definition class. So I'll copy the feature one step definition class and I'll paste it inside, inside the same folder. Then I will rename this class name as page object model step definitions I will re remove this particular copy so that's it I will open the page object model step definitions class so I will remove all the steps I don't want it so that's it so here I will specify the class name as the page object model step definitions. So similarly I will add the constructor name. So that's it. So when browser launched from this hooks, so automatically we will get the driver in this particular constructor. Then after taking this driver, we are assigning to the our internal variable that is iWeb driver type. By using this driver object, we can identify the elements and we can perform the actions. So that's it. So we have the feature file and we have the step definition file. Now we have to create the step implementations. So you can go to the page object model feature file and right click on this file and you say define steps and simply copy it and come back to the page object model step definition class and paste it here. So that's it. So I'll remove these statements. So that's it guys. So we are done with 
step 3 we have discussed the test scenario then we have created the feature file then we have implemented the step definition class so we will write the main logic bit later after creating the page object page classes right so our next step number 4 is we have to create the page object model page classes so inside the this project i will create the one folder called pages so inside the pages i will create the one class called search page so you can rename it as even home page also that is also fine there i'll say search page then add it so i'll open the class here i'll define this class as a public so that's it so here i'm creating one constructor public and followed by the class name so this will accept the i web driver type so here i'll say i so that's it you can import this i web driver from the open selenium so why i am defining the constructor is whenever i am calling the methods whenever i am trying to identify the web page element by using driver object so we will get the driver from the step definition class so we will pass this particular driver object so it is initiated from the hooks after from the hooks it will comes to the step definition class from step definition class we will pass on to the our page object model page class right so whenever we create the object of this particular class so automatically driver object will be initiated right so here i am declaring one private web driver and driver so i will accept the driver when object gets created and i'll assign back assign to the current class driver reference variable so simply i'll say this dot driver and i'll assign this particular driver to the current class driver reference variable right so that's it so by using this driver reference variable you can find the element and you can perform the action on the any of the web element so this is a simple skeleton we have to follow in the another couple of page classes also so we have created the search page class after searching it so we have the result page so let's create the result page now so i'll add it as a class here i'll say result page then add it so similarly i'll add the another page called channel page from the result page we are clicking on the channel so it is going to the channel page so that is the reason I'm specify I'm creating another class called channel page from the channel page itself we are going to get the title of the web page right so here I'm saying channel page that's it so let's go to the search page simply I'll copy this skeleton of the constructor I will go to the result page and I'll specify this as a public class I'll come inside this one I'll paste it so here I'll, I will just specify the class name as the constructor name then you can import the iweb driver from the open creator selenium so similarly I will be doing it for the channel page also public class and the class name so inside this I will define the constructor then you can import the related packages from the iweb driver then specify the constructor name as a class name so that's it so our skeleton is ready in the search page result page and channel page so we have created a total three pages right now in the search page what we have to do we have to identify the this search text box right so let's identify the search text box by inspecting it so here I am using the one attribute called name by using the name I will identify this particular search text box I will use this value and I will write the xpath I 
here I'm specifying to forward slash followed by within the square brackets I am saying name equal to in the single quotation I'm specifying the value so it is highlighting the search text box I'll copy this X path right we have the constructor ready inside the search page so here we have to write we have to define the web page element right so that can be done by using the by dot you can specify the any X path so let's write by and equal to you can specify the web page element name so here I'm saying search text box and equal to here you can use by dot you will get all the locators here right so we have written the X path so I'm selecting the X path so inside this you can specify the value whatever we have just now written in the web page right so that's it so similarly you can add a number of web page elements by using the by dot and whatever the locator you want to use you can go ahead and use it that is not an issue and if you if there is a change in the web, web page element directly you can come to this particular class and modify it here only one place no need to go to the each and every test script and modify it right so that's all about identifying the web page element and specifying it in the search page that's a page object model page class right so now we have identified the search text box so we have to implement a one method which will enter the search keyword right so that's the reason here i'm writing public and return type i'm specifying it as a next page type so first page is search page then next we have the result page right after searching here something tester stock it is going to the result page so that is the reason i need to return the object of next page that means result page so that's the reason i will specify here as a result page then i'll say here search text as a method name then here i'm accepting one argument whenever i call this particular method we have to pass the search keyword so here i'm saying text so that's it so let's use this particular element by using the by so here i'm using the driver object dot i'm calling to the find so inside this we have to pass the by by type right so i will pass this particular element that is a by type then here i'm using the send keys by using the send keys i can enter the text whatever it is coming in this particular text variable then after entering the data in this particular search text box we have to after entering the data in this particular search text box we have to press the enter enter from the keyboard also right so let us perform that action by using the send keys only i'll copy the whole statement so right now we are implementing the page object page classes after implementing all these page object page, page classes we will be calling these methods in the step definition class if you look at this step definition class we have not written anything inside the step implementations right so let's implement the these pages firstly then we will call these methods in the step definition class so inside the send keys i will user keys dot enter so this will press the enter from the keyboard so that's it guys so if you look at this one return type is result page type at the end i will say return new followed by the result page so inside this we have to pass the driver object right so that's it so we are done with implementing the search page so we have defined the constructor which will get the driver object from the step definition class and after that we have identified the element and we have created one abstraction method which will perform the search functionality in the web page and at the end it is returning the result page right so let's go to the result page now so similarly so here in the result page i need to identify the this particular text 
and I need to click on this particular channel, right? That is a tester stock. So what I will do simply I will I'll use by it'll say channel name as the by by name, then I'll use the by dot locator. Here I'm using the link text. So simply I'll specify the channel name inside the link text. Here I'm using testers talk. So that's it. So we have identified the web page element by using the link text. After that, let's write the abstraction method to perform the click operation on that public. So after clicking on this channel, it is going to the channel page. So that's the reason we have to write the return type as channel page, right? So here I'm writing channel page and after that I'll say click on channel. So that's it guys. So similarly I will use the driver object dot find element. So inside that I will pass the by type whatever we have used and then I will call to the click. Then finally I have to return the object of type channel page type. So here I am calling the return then I will create the object of the channel page. So inside this we have to pass the driver object. So that's it guys, it's very simple. Now we are done with implementing the result page. Then we will go to the channel page now. In this channel page, we are not doing anything. Simply we are getting the title of this web page, right? That means it will return the tester stock hyphen YouTube. So this particular text, we are validating it in the last step, right? That is, uh, so that's what we have to do. So here I'm not identifying any element. That means, so here I'm writing one simple method public, which will return me the title of that particular web page. So here I'm saying get title. So by using the driver object, I'll say title. So this returns me the title of the web page. Here I'll specify return statement. So that's it guys. So now we are done with implementing the search page, result page and then channel page. In the search page, we are performing the search text. Sorry, we are performing the search operation in the search page. In the result page, we are clicking on the channel. And in the channel page, we are getting the title of the web page. That's it. So let's call the first method that is a search text. This particular method in the our step definition class, right? So now I will go to the page object model step definition class and here let us implement let's write in logic for each steps so first step we have this we have is enter the youtube url right so we will use the driver object so as we have the driver object in this current class from the hooks so i am using the same object dot url so this this is where we have to write write the url so simply i'll go here and i'll copy it this youtube.com then so after opening the youtube.com so i'm specifying thread dot sleep so that even execution can be slow so that we can verify it properly so here i'm passing the 4000 milliseconds that means four seconds it will wait after entering the url right so let us go to the next step we have entered the url enter the youtube url then in the second step search for the tester stock in youtube right so so this functionality is already implemented in our search page right so if i have to call to this particular method method sorry so i have to create the object of the search page so here i will create the object of the search page so here i'm specifying the reference variable of the search page and i will import the res respective class sorry respect with respect to that i have imported simply uh, this uh, particular class from the pages right so that's it 
So I will use this particular reference variable inside the second step that is our search for. Then I will create the object here and then I will pass the driver object. So that's it. Now once we have the object of the search page, we can use that search page dot you can call to the method called search text. So here we have to pass the search keyword. So here I'm passing test as stop. So that's it. So after searching for something, let's wait for some time. I will use the thread dot sleep so that we can see the execution properly. So now we are done with entering the URL, then searching for the something in the youtube.com second step. In the third step, we need to navigate to navigate to the channel. We have to click on the channel. So this abstraction method is implemented in the result page. So if you look at this particular method, search text. So this is returning as the result page type. All right. So that is the reason we have to after calling this method search text, we have to assign back to the result page reference variable. So how we have created a reference variable for the search page, I will create a another reference variable of type result page type. So I will take this reference variable and in the line number 30, so I will assign back here. And if you see the return type of this particular method search text and it is returning as the result page, right? So that's the reason I have assigned back to the reference variable of the result page. Now I can use this reference variable of result page class and I can call to the method called click on the channel. We can perform the click operation on the channel by calling to this method. Let us go to the, our step definition class. By using the result page, I will call to the click on channel. So that's it. After going to the channel, so I will wait for some time there also so that we can see the execution properly. So we navigated to the channel. Then finally, we have to verify the title of that particular web page, right? So that's the reason I'm using the asset dot. So you can import it from the unit dot framework. And here, here you can find a number of methods, but you can use only the R equal where you can specify expected and actual result. So there are other method also you can try it out and let me know if you face any issues. So here you, you need we have to specify the expected and actual result. So already if I go to the channel page. So this method is returning me the title of the web page. Right. So let's go to the or step definition class now. So return type of this click on channel right. If you see it. It is a channel page type. So we have to assign back to the channel page type so that we can call to the this particular method get title so that we can read the title of that particular web page. So similarly how we have created the reference variable of the search page result page. So we need to create another reference variable of channel page as well so that we can call to the respective method. So by using this particular channel page reference variable. So here I'll simply assign the after calling to the method called click on channel and it is returning me the channel page type. So that's the reason here I have assigned back to the channel page by using this one. So here I'm using the reference variable of channel page and I'm calling to the method called get title. So this method returns me the actual title of the web page from the web application. So here we have to specify the expected result. So here it is displayed the channel name, sorry, title of the web page is tester stock space hyphen, then it is displayed the YouTube. So this is what it is displayed. So here by using the assertion, we are simply comparing the two values. One is from the web page and second one is expected value, right? So that's it guys. So almost we have implemented the most of the logic which is required for the page object module concept. So whatever the minutes of this tutorial we have discussed. So now we are left with only only step number six. 
we have to execute the feature file and we have to verify the extent report is generated properly or not right so let's build this project now so meanwhile let me sum summarize what we have done so far we have created the page object model feature file then we have created the page object model step definition class then third thing what we have done is we have created created the pages folder inside that we have implemented three page classes and all all the methods from these classes page classes we have called it in the our step definition class so that's it guys now let's execute the scenario i will go to the test explorer and if you look at this scenario is surrounded with the tester stock inside this particular group we should be able to find the script called page object model right so i will go to the test explorer and if you see here so there is a script called page object model so simply i will run it so let's verify after the execution extent report is generated or not so after the successful execution we will verify with the failed script as well whether properly report is generating or not so now the browser got opened and also it is entered the url now it should search with the tester stock and it is searching with the tester stock and after that it has to click on the channel name and it is going to the channel name sorry it is going to the channel page then finally it is verifying the title of the web page and if you look at this one our test is passing successfully right so let us go to the our results test results folder let's look at the extent report so if you look at this one so just now this report got generated simply i'll open the extent report and if you look at this one right so this is the feature name what we have given and here also you can see the feature name and this is a scenario name what we have given right so inside this particular scenario we have the four steps first step is given enter the youtube url then second step search for the tester stock in youtube then third step navigate to channel then finally we are verifying the title of the page so we have executed successfully guys so that's it so let us try to fill the test script and we will execute it so what i will do is i will go to the fourth step where we are verifying the title of the web page right so i will modify little bit there i'll go to the go to definition so here expected result is this one now it is matching so that's the reason our test is getting passed so simply i'll remove this youtube so now actual text and the expected text will not match so this time it will fail so we'll execute this feature file then we will verify the extent report is reflecting properly or not we'll verify this one it has opened the browser and entered the url and it is going to search with the keywords that is a tester stock because we have provided a little bit of weight so it is executing bit slow so it is searching with the tester stock and it is clicked on the channel name then it is going to verify the title of this particular web page then finally it is good closing the browser and it should fail because expected result and the actual results are not matching if you look at this one in the message also so we are expecting the just tester stock but in the web page present tester stock hyphen and the youtube so this is the expected failure so let us go to the our extent report we'll verify whether it is properly report is reflected or not let's refresh this page and if you look at this one 
this particular feature got failed and if I click on this scenario first three steps are passed and in the fourth step our expected and actual results are not matching of the web page title and it is filled with the reason proper reason and also it has added the screenshot at the end if you click on this screenshot it is going to open the screenshot like this so this is how we can implement the page object model design pattern with the spec flow selenium c -sharp. same thing you can try at your end and also you can try try to pass the search keywords from the feature file by using the data tables or the examples so this this will be your assignment you can try at your end and if you face any difficulties or if you are having any issues or queries you can comment in the comment section click on like and also subscribe subscribes to this particular channel thank you so much for watching